It's 530. You're watching WKYT This Morning. We're tracking the large police presence in Lexington following a reported shooting. The details just ahead. Still figuring out what's going on there exactly. The FAA is urging any passengers who have Samsung's newest smartphone to leave them at home. Find out why straight ahead. And we'll take a look at NASA's latest mission to a mysterious asteroid that could provide scientists with groundbreaking data. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky Morning start right here on WKYT, and it's so good to have you with us on this Friday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I am Andrea Walker. It is Friday, thank goodness, September 9th. We've been going through a bit of a dry spell across the bluegrass, but changes are in the way. That's so right. Much needed changes. And then uh, it'll change again. And, and again. that's good, right? Welcome it's Kentucky. to Kentucky. And meteorologist Mike Linden is in our first alert weather center in for Micah. Good morning. Good morning, Bill and Andrea. We're right now caught in the middle of that transition from summer into fall. Fall, and we'll kind of feel a little of both this weekend. Today, we are feeling and looking a lot like the summer. Thunderstorms working their way in from the west right now over the E Town area, following in 64 and the BG Parkway moving eastward into central Kentucky. That will be the case throughout the rest of our morning, but we take a much wider look here, and there is yet another cold front to the northwest that will impact us as we head into Saturday. So, showers and storms today. More of them tomorrow, potentially a little bit stronger, but that will eventually bring the temperatures down. Right now, if you're getting up and getting your day started, the mid to low 70s, not to mention humidity, running high. So again, it feels like the summer, but we are certainly looking at some fall-like conditions into the second half of our weekend. I'll take you hour by hour and show you the tour of the seasons we'll experience here in Kentucky coming up. All right, we'll roll with it, and we thank you, Micah. Uh, Mike. In for Micah. We are continuing to track breaking news in Lexington this morning. There is a large police presence gathered outside a Lexington restaurant, and it follows an early morning shooting there. The scene is outside the Waffle House on Athens Boonesboro, just past Interstate 75. We go now to WKYT's Mike Fire, who is at the scene this morning trying to figure out exactly what is going on. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea and Bill. That's exactly right. There's a large police presence here at the Waffle House on Athens Boonesboro Road. Now, details are limited right now, but here's what we know right now. Around 4 a.m., police say someone shot himself while in a car in the parking lot. Police were already on scene when the shot was fired. They say the victim shot himself in the neck. Now, we don't know if that person shot himself on purpose or if it was some sort of accident. We also don't know why police were already at the Waffle House. Were they here doing regular patrols or were they called out here to investigate something? We're checking with police to get these questions answered. We'll stay out here all morning and work to get you more information. Once those details become available, we'll be sure to share it with you on air, online, and through our WKYT mobile news app. That's the latest here on Athens Boonesboro Road. I'm Mike Byer, WKYT. Okay, thank you very much. Obviously, a story we'll stay on top of as it develops this morning. The FAA has issued a new warning for passengers regarding the new Samsung Galaxy Note 7 smartphones. Now, Michelle Chamberlain is at our alert desk with the details on this, and they are uh, somewhat uh, concerning, certainly attention getting. Michelle? It definitely is. Samsung recently stopped selling the newly released smartphones, recalling more than 2 million of the Galaxy Note 7 phones after reports that the phones spontaneously catch on fire. Now, there was one family in Florida that claimed they left the phone charging in the SUV and it caught fire destroying their vehicle. Reports like this one have prompted the FAA to warn airline passengers to not use the phone on flights. The FAA also asked passengers to not put the phones in checked bags. Now, the warning goes on to say not to turn on or charge the smartphone during flights. Bill, this is definitely a rare and unusual warning by the FAA to warn passengers about a certain product. Well, again, something that uh, we'll uh, continue to keep our eyes on, certainly, as that uh, story unfolds. And we thank you very much, Michelle. A Lexington man found guilty of manslaughter in the stabbing death of his boyfriend is expected to be sentenced today. Police originally had charged Matthew Donahue with murder in the death of Todd Schumacher. But after several hours of deliberations, a jury found him guilty of manslaughter last month, a lesser charge. And jurors have recommended Donahue spend 10 years behind bars.
State police say two people suffered life-threatening injuries following a crash in southern Kentucky. It started in Knox County when police tried to pull over a speeding Mercedes on US-25 in the Bimbo community. They say the car did not stop for several miles, so they stopped pursuing for safety. Shortly after, police say that Mercedes ended up hitting a tractor trailer and three other vehicles on the same road near Corbin. Police say a 16-year-old girl driving the car and a 20-year-old passenger were both flown to a a Tennessee hospital in critical condition. They say the teen driver, who is from Harrogate, Tennessee, had been reported missing by her mother uh, this morning. And new this morning, deputies in Franklin County say a man wanted for questioning in a home invasion has been arrested. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says they found Robert Solomon yesterday afternoon at an apartment on Leewood Drive. Deputies say Solomon tried running off, but they arrested him. They say the home invasion happened Wednesday at a home on Winston Avenue. Deputies say a gun, drugs, and items stolen from the home were found in Solomon's possession at the time of his arrest. And one person is dead this morning following a violent crash involving a school bus in Metcalf County. It happened yesterday on Highway 1243 near Edmonton when a Metcalf County school bus and a van collided head on. Police say the collision caused the van to flip and catch fire after leaving the roadway. The coroner says the driver, Alicia Thurmond, died at the scene. Neighbors say they tried to take care of the children involved until first responders arrived. I tried to comfort them, you know get them away from the, the wreck, try to get them out of the smoke. Police say of the 34 students on the bus, none were seriously injured. Investigators are still trying to figure out what led to the crash. Lexington police are still searching for a group of men they say robbed a family at gunpoint. Police say three men forced their way into a home on Lucille Drive in the Masterson Station neighborhood Wednesday night. A family with two children were inside. Police say none were injured, but the robbers stole money and marijuana along with the family's car. The suspects are described as three young black men who may have had gold teeth. Police say the stolen car they're looking for is a gray Toyota Camry. It appears a man accused of abandoning dozens of horses in Mercer County has been offered a plea deal. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the Mercer County attorney has offered a deal to Charles Burrell. The details of the deal are not known. Burrell is charged with 43 counts of animal cruelty. His daughter, Maria, also faces charges in the case. Burrell's next hearing is now scheduled for September 29th. Well, the Cincinnati Zoo is expected to reopen as scheduled today. This comes after police say someone called in a threat to the zoo yesterday. Investigators have not detailed what the caller said, but as a precaution, police and zoo officials evacuated more than 100 visitors and staff. Bomb sniffing dogs were brought in to search the zoo, but police say nothing suspicious was found. The zoo has been the target of critics after a gorilla named Harambe was shot and killed back in May after a three year old boy fell into the gorilla's enclosure. So, uh, some challenges up there this summer, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's been yep, a tough summer yeah. for them. This morning, a NASA spacecraft is on the way to Bono, a small asteroid orbiting the sun, hoping to bring back a handful of dust that could hold clues to the beginning of our solar system. It's chasing down the mm -hmm. asteroid, essentially. Hedda Daniels has the latest on this first of its kind mission. Everyone is go. All eyes were on the heavens as Osiris Rex, a spacecraft named after the Egyptian god of resurrection and fertility, left for its mission to learn more about the origins of life on Earth. And liftoff of Osiris Rex, its seven year mission to boldly go to the asteroid Bennu and back. The 19 story Atlas rocket carrying Osiris Rex blasted off, traveling at 22,000 miles per hour. Every day at NASA, we're turning science fiction into science fact, and that's what we did tonight. It will take the SUV sized spacecraft two years to reach Bennu. Once there, Osiris will map the asteroid and then reach out his robotic arm to kiss the flying space rock, collecting dust and gravel to bring back to Earth. What will happen when the samples come back will be decades of study. Scientists say Bennu contains carbon that dates back four billion years to the beginning of our solar system. We're going to be answering some of the most fundamental questions that NASA really focuses on. How does this planet work? How did this planet form? If the seven year quest is a success, Osiris Rex will bring back the largest cosmic bounty of space samples since the Apollo moon rocks. Hannah Daniels, CBS News.
And NASA says the spacecraft will reach Earth in September 2023, dropping the sample container off for a high-speed plunge to the Utah Test and Training Range about 80 miles west of Salt Lake City. So it's all planned out, and let's see if it goes according to yeah. plan. But, <laughs> but it's interesting, certainly a lot to be learned. Well, there are a few events going on throughout central and eastern Kentucky this weekend that will put you in the mood for fall. Starting tomorrow morning, Culver's at Bywater Farms in Georgetown are teaming up for an amazing thank you to farmers. The five acre corn maze opens at 9 a.m. See what I did there? Admission to the farm is $10. You can also kick off harvest season at Harvest Fest at Shaker Village tomorrow. You can take a hay ride, climb haystacks, and compete in the Farm Olympics. The fall fun kicks off at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. There's also a hard cider bash at Saker Village tomorrow night. There will be a pig roast, barn dance, and plenty of craft <laughs> hard cider. That kicks off tomorrow at 6.30. That it, sounds like a good time. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Roots and Heritage Festival in Lexington uh, this weekend as well, and uh, Old Fashioned Trading Days in uh, Southern Kentucky and Williamsburg. So uh, lots to do. Get out yes. and see your state. We're you ready know? for fall, as you yeah. can tell by these events. You got it. <laughs> 5.41 is the time this morning. Let's check live drive traffic, see what's going on out there early. And our first check is of the roads in the region, and we do have some icons that we need to be uh, checking out here uh, to see exactly uh, what is going on this morning. Morning. It looks like uh, once again uh, they're back to some restricted lanes out there at Manowar and Nicholasville Road this morning. Of course, all the construction going on at the summit location, so uh, that it could be a bit of an issue for you today. Here are your current travel times. It looks like things are running pretty smoothly on the screen. About 12 minutes heading into Nicholasville, 11 in Versailles. Everything looking good this morning, so that's a nice thing to see on your Friday. And here's a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam. We are at Richmond Road and Manowar. Looks pretty sparse out there, mm -hmm. but there are some cars out yeah, this morning at 542. A little crowd waiting to uh, make the uh, light there at uh, right. <laughs> that location. Always a, sort of an entry point into Lexington. Still a lot more news coming up for you on your Friday here on WKYT. A Louisville teen is going viral for making a difference one step at a time. The heartwarming story when we come back. Well, we still have just a couple more weeks to go until it's officially the fall season, but summer is not done with us yet. I'm tracking showers and storms set to work their way in here on Friday. I'll take you hour by hour and show you when to expect them coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. Here we go. Your Friday is off and running and looking and certainly feeling a lot like the summer, even though fall is not too far away. We look at the Defender Radar Network right now, tracking a line of showers and storms moving eastward along the BG Parkway and following I-64. Right now, the bulk of the action is sitting right on top of Elizabethtown, still working its way eastward, but nothing majorly impacting your morning commute in central Kentucky just yet. We take a wider look here, and it's all part of a cold front sitting over southern Indiana and Ohio that will push in those storms. But to our northwest is another cold front that's going to shake things up into the weekend. Don't forget about this cold front. We'll come back to it. Now, looking at your Friday here on the hour by hour, if there's anything good about these storms, it's that the thick clouds will keep those temperatures down. Rather than hitting the mid to low 90s, most of us today will hit the mid 80s. So a little bit cooler, but it's still going to be rather humid and ugly through most of your day today. A little difficult to really plan to do anything outside when you're talking about the scattered showers and storms. This is your hour by hour forecast. By about 7 o'clock this morning, most in central and northern Kentucky will be getting in on the showers and storms. Pushing forward, we start to see those showers and storms move into Clay County, Rock Castle County. But even into 9 o'clock this morning, still looking at the additional rounds of scattered showers and storms. We get a bit of a break into the afternoon, but then things get going a little bit later into the evening once that cold front sits along northern Kentucky. Moving into Saturday, though, remember that cold front to the northwest of us? Well, here it comes, moving into Saturday afternoon. A more potent line of showers and storms this time. Notice the orange, the yellow, moving right on through central Kentucky. That's right around 5, 6 o'clock on Saturday. Those are some stronger storms. Could be bringing in some very gusty winds as well. But behind that front, Look at these daytime highs, the upper 70s for your Sunday. That is really going to be the big story of the weekend. 
as that front cuts across the Commonwealth on Saturday, moving into Sunday, we start to feel and look a lot more like fall. So it's a tale of two seasons here over the next few days. We got the summer today and tomorrow, and then Saturday, feeling a lot like autumn. Pumpkin spice lattes, you can almost smell them. But today and tomorrow, not exactly the prettiest days out there. So if you have plans to be outside, have a backup plan just in case. The bulk of the rain comes tomorrow afternoon. That's when we'll see those stronger storms, but still a little ugly out there today too. Yeah. And you you might look at and miss most of it, right? I mean, it's it's, it's scattered. Today yeah. more so than tomorrow. Tomorrow's as you saw there that very organized line that cold mm. front tomorrow is the day, but today a little more scattered. So you could probably get away with things well, today. Well, I tried. Okay. Brings on the cooler weather though on Sunday. <laughs> That's true. There you It'll go. Last half full. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, the time this morning on WKYT is 5:49. A picture of a Louisville teenager praying with a homeless man has quickly gone viral, but the emotional story behind it has made him a standout individual in the community. 14 year old Laron Tunzel has lived in the city's west side all his life. While his mother admits years ago she feared her son might grow into a little bit of a troublemaker, that hasn't happened. Laron has joined a growing organization that is working to change his neighborhood for the better. And one of his gestures of kindness is getting a lot of recognition. Laron was helping feed the homeless when he noticed a man in line who looked worn down. Then he noticed that the man didn't have any shoes on. So without hesitation, he prayed and then took off his own brand new shoes for a special surprise. Well, at first he was like, no, I can't take these because these are too expensive. And I told him, you know, take it because it's what God wanted me to do. So I told him to take it for me. That's when a picture of the gesture was taken and then posted to Facebook. Now listen to this. The photo has been viewed and shared more than a million times around the country, even the world. Just a good example of making a difference, one step at a time. A lot we can learn from this young man, uh, right here in Kentucky. Uh, absolutely, it certainly is wonderful. You know, you, you have uh, also the kids who are mowing lawns over there in yes. Louisville. You know, so uh, trying to turn around what's been a tough summer, That's uh, right. certainly for many. But uh, yeah, what Love a great story. story. Good story. Time this morning is 5:50. It is 10 till 6 on WKYT. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news at this hour. We'll look at traffic this morning and see how things are moving along out there. All of our top stories on the way and some health news as well. And it's good to have you on WKYT this morning. Good morning and welcome back into WKYT this morning. We're glad you're up and at it with us. Rising and shining, doing the best you can anyway on a Friday, <laughs> right? <laughs> 5.54. Like you said, a short week that turned into a long week Didn't for us. Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you at this hour. Our news team is busy as we continue to follow an early morning shooting in Lexington. We're told it happened outside the Waffle House on Ethan's Boonesboro Road. Details limited at the moment, but a large police presence remains at the scene. But we'll much more on this developing story coming up a live report at six o'clock. Well the White House is assessing whether North Korea conducted its fifth and largest nuclear test. The development comes after the U.S. Geological Survey recorded a 5.3 magnitude seismic event near the North's known nuclear site this morning. President Obama had just wrapped up his final trip to Asia as president where he warned of tougher sanctions against the nation over its nuclear program. And with less than 60 days to the general election, the 2016 presidential candidates are sharpening their verbal attacks. At her first formal press conference in 278 days, Hillary Clinton labeled Donald Trump a gift for ISIS and criticized his praise for Russia's president during Wednesday's commander-in-chief forum. Trump is standing by the remarks and called the Democratic nominee trigger-happy for voting to go to war in Iraq. A new compound may slow the progression of kidney disease in patients with diabetes. Researchers from Madrid say the compound seemed to get rid of the harmful effects of high blood sugar on kidney cells in mice. About one-third of diabetes patients develop kidney disease. And a new therapy for stroke survivors seems to improve hand function. In the new technique, patients control electrical stimulation to their weakened hand with a glove worn on their other hand. Researchers say patients who received the new therapy scored twice as well on dexterity tests than patients who received the common treatment. Interesting. Yeah, very good uh, research there. We'll yes. see if that uh, continues to develop.
Now let's get a check this hour on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. And we'll see what's going on by taking a look at the region this morning. And there are uh, several sites where there'll be some construction work uh, going on today, as you see. And uh, we're taking a look uh, right now at uh, really no problems uh, reported anywhere. Uh, in the day ahead, though, uh, watch for uh, that work to continue on Nicholasville Road at Manowar in the area of the summit. And here is a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam. We are looking at Manowar and Todd's Road, and there ain't a soul to be seen. Oh, here's a couple. They're they're driving around, That's but right. the roads are pretty much yours if you head out at this time of the day. Yeah, it looks pretty good out there. No fog uh, really to uh, worry about this morning, which uh, had been a bit of an issue during August. Mm -hmm. uh, so, all right, we want to check in. Meteorologist Mike Linden is in this morning. Hello there. Well, good morning, Bill and Andrea. Today, the end of the work week, showers and storms already moving into the bluegrass. Still a little slow to get to the bluegrass region, but regardless, still looking like a steamy and stormy Friday. There's still another hour to come of WKYT this morning, so don't go anywhere. We still have plenty more to come.